E-bikes are all the rage, but half the people I talked to bought the wrong bike. So don't let this happen to you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and this is Paul. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you get an e-bike. Yeah, e-bikes are the perfect fit if you are living the RV life. However, half the people I've talked to in campgrounds bought the wrong one. So we wanted to make this video, especially now, if you're shopping for an e-bike and you realize that you most likely will have to shop online. You won't be able to test ride a bike in person. There's a, a whole spectrum of of uh, e-bikes out there as far as cost is concerned. I've seen them for as cheap as $500 and there are e-bikes, believe it or not, that you can spend $10,000 on. Right, so we'll tell you what to look for, what to avoid, that kind of thing. And if you haven't guessed already, Paul is definitely an e-bike expert, or pretty darn close to it. As you can see, he's dressed appropriately today. <laughs> yeah, I've been a cyclist for 30 plus years. I just recently, in the last two years, I guess, uh, got into e-bikes. My first e-bike, it had a twist throttle, no pedal assist. I hated it after about, about a month. Even with all my cycling knowledge, I made a huge mistake when I bought my first bike. So don't let that happen to you, right? We have two, we ride them all the time. Uh, and in fact, we even have a new channel that uh, we'll tell you about later. So why an e-bike? If you're going to different campgrounds like Paul and I are, you'll quickly realize that a regular road bike is not going to be enough to get around. We've been on some huge campgrounds where it could be a half mile, three quarters mile, or even a mile to go oh, from one end to yeah. another, uphill. Uphill in both directions. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and you know, why would you want to travel around the campground? Well, if you want to go to the pool, the lodge, you get your mail, that kind of thing. If there's uh, breakfast or any kind of events, you'll, you'll find that walking, these campgrounds can be so huge. Some campgrounds we've stayed at are three, four, five hundred acres. Just really big. So. Yeah. The, the one in Cottonwood comes to mind. We had, we were up at the near the top of the campground and we had friends down down in the valley down down in the lower sections and it was a mile from our campsite to their campsite and we never left the park and you may think well i could take my vehicle well if you are towing a fifth wheel or a trailer you probably have a gas or a diesel guzzler so you may want to think about getting a bike just to save on that gas and it's just fun i mean, I mean if you haven't been on a bike for since you were a teenager perhaps Maybe you've forgotten how much fun it is to ride. I just have a blast every time. What an e-bike does is it takes all the bad things of a regular bicycle and makes them go away. You know, where you're trying to get uphill and it's a lot of work or you've, you've gotten halfway to, you, out and you realize you've got to come back and now you're tired. Well, all that goes away. Yeah, we regularly do 20 mile rides on our bikes. I, I wouldn't expect a person that's just getting into e-biking to jump on a bike and go 20 miles. But you can do it before you plop down however much you're going to spend on the bike. Decide what you want to do with that bike and think hard about that because that, that's the difference between getting the right bike and getting the wrong bike. Um, I'm fine with my with my touring bike, um, but I don't think Liz would be as happy if, if I would have gotten her a bike like mine. Mine is made for off-roading. Mine is a mountain bike. It eats up the hills. I do not have to work that hard to go up hills, which is, is super important for me. I also love to ride on the beach and just do more off-roading. For, for me, nothing is off limits. I can go anywhere in that bike. I, li I like to go fast. Yeah, see, he's more about speed. So he's more about road and just, you know, yeah. and performance. Yeah. My bike's capable of 30 miles an hour. Um, and and mine's like 23. So the very first thing to look at when you're looking at an e-bike is, and then Paul kept telling me this when I was shopping and we're texting back and forth, is to get pedal assist. You want to be able to do, or at least I did, I wanted to be able to do some pedaling. I just wanted my pedaling to be easier. There are some that are just throttle only e-bikes where you're just basically on a moped. If you don't want any exercise and you just want a bike with power, then it would be the throttle only e-bike. Mm -hmm. Some e-bikes come with both. You have the pedal assist and you can you can adjust it. You can you, you can have different levels of assist and then you also can say 
I am done. I am tired. I don't even want to pedal. And you have the throttle. And that is actually both of our bikes have pedal assist and throttle. But be aware that there will be some places you cannot take your bike. National parks and in fact all of California county parks have banned throttle e-bikes. So you just need to be aware of that. There may be some roads closed to you if you have a throttle e-bike. So one mistake that I have talked to several people about that bought the wrong bikes was getting the throttle that's in the handlebar. Okay, so twist throttle. the twist throttle is what it's called. So if you're walking your bike or getting on or off, it's so easy to touch it and that bike will fly away from you. I definitely would not have a bike with a twist yeah. throttle. When you're shopping for e-bikes, you probably have the number one question. And this is the number one question that, that we get asked all the time. All the time. When, when somebody sees that we have e-bikes, the first question that we get is, how far can you go on it? Because yeah. believe me, what you think is far on a road bike, oh, 20, I never bike more than 20 miles, 25 miles on a road bike. Probably you can do twice as far or more. Easily. You, easily. Easily. Than what you, what you could do on a road yeah. bike. You could yeah. do twice as much. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we do triple, maybe triple yeah. of, of what I could do on a road bike. Yeah. So range is really important. You do not want to buy a bike and then find it does not give you what you want as far as range. So grab a paper and pencil because Paul is going to explain this. This is super important. This is numbers, but these numbers will really help you make your decision. Think of the battery as a gas tank, and there's always a num there's always two numbers uh, related to um, an e-bike battery or any battery for that matter, and it is the voltage and the amp hour. Most bikes nowadays are either 36 or 48 volt. Um, actually, my bike is is 52 volt. That's not as important as the amp hour. The amp hour is the size of the gas tank. Using our bikes for an example, my bike is a 52 volt, like I said, and it's 19.2 amp hours. Her bike is a 48 volt, and it's about 13 amp hour. Now, if you do, if you want to know how many watt hours, and this is this is going to determine how how far you can go on it. If you want to know the watt hours, you multiply the voltage times the amp hours. So in my case, 52 times 19.2 is 998.4. That is the watt hours. Now, if you had a 750 watt motor, that means you could run that motor. If you were running it wide open for an hour, you would burn 750 watts. You're never going to ride like that. That gives you an idea of your range. So that would mean that, that I would have maybe an hour, a little, well, actually a little more than an hour, 998. It's obviously bigger than 750. So I would have a little more than an hour of range at wide open throttle, basically. It'd be like you getting in your car and just putting your foot to the floor. You're just not going to do that on a bicycle. So in practicality, about how many miles can you go on your battery? Assuming I'm just going to cruise around 18 to 20 miles an hour, uh, easily 60 miles. On yours, probably around 30, yeah. You want to get as much range as you can afford. Look at the specs for the battery, pay attention to the amp hour number, Get the biggest amp hour number you can get. So one thing when you're bike shopping and you're looking online, know that some companies are going to hide that information that you really need, and that is the technical specs. But for example, and I'm looking online now, there's a company that says that their bike will go 25 to 50 miles. Well, you know right away that that's best case. It's just like when you look at miles per gallon when you're shopping for a car. So if you see something that is 25 to 50 and you want longer range than that, just look at the 25 and go, it's probably not going to work for you if you're looking for something longer. The bike that, um, that she's referring to, I won't call it out by name, but it has a 10.4 amp hours and, and 48 volts. So that's a little over 500, about 500 watt hours. So that's going to be on the low end of the scale. And it is on the low end of the, the price point too. Again, you get what you pay for. We just don't want you to end up with not enough bike for what you want to do. So one number that often comes up when you're looking at e-bikes is watts. Can you explain watts? Watts is the power, is a, is a measure of power. 750 watts is one horsepower. One horsepower on a bicycle is, is pretty substantial. Your bike is, maxes out at 2,500 watts. My bike 
is 750 watts. So you need that if you're in a hilly area or if you plan on going on hills. I actually test rode a bike in Santa Cruz and it would not go up this massive steep. It was like a San Francisco rice aroni hill kind of thing, right? It would not go up that hill. So that was a huge disappointment. You'll find bikes out there with 250 watts. I wouldn't, yeah. I would not touch one. He told me when we were texting back and forth to not go under 500. In fact, he said, try and get 750 or more. And your weight will also have a factor in it too uh, as to how much power you need if you're planning on going up hills. This leads us into mid-drive versus hub drive, right? Perfect. So explain what mid-drive is. So mid-drive, the motor is basically right under your bottom bracket. In fact... Well, uh, what's your bottom bracket? I know nothing about this. What's your bottom bracket? <laughs> okay, the bottom bracket is the thing that the axle goes through that you're that your cranks Can you tell attached he's the tech to, guy? that your, your, your cranks attached to. That's the bottom bracket, that cylindrical thing down at the, the bottom. The cranks the are what your pedals are attached to, if you don't know that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the crank arms are what your pedals are attached to, yeah. yeah. A mid-drive is, is where the motor is attached to the bottom bracket, or in some cases, in, in Liz's bike as an example, of, now what they've, they've integrated the motor into the bottom bracket, so there really is no bottom bracket on on e-bikes like like what uh, Liz has and then the hub drive the motor is actually in your rear wheel in the center it's hub the hub it. it's the hub of the rear wheel so yeah. why we're talking about this is I remember when we were texting back and forth you said there were pros and cons between a mid drive and a hub drive so you're basically when you have a mid drive the motor is is actually turning the cranks for you or helping you assisting you in turning the cranks uh, hub drive is driving the rear wheel. If you're going to do a lot of hills or if you think you're going to do a lot of hills, mid drive is better. So let's get into the, the, the difference between a low cost e-bike and an expensive e-bike. Basically it comes down to the components. I have a, a mid-priced e-bike from a company called Juiced and the derailleur they use is a Shimano Altus and it is kind of the entry level to the to their quality line and you could replace that derailleur for twenty dollars liz's bike is considerably more expensive than mine to replace the derailleur on her bike it would be about a hundred dollars so you see the difference a twenty dollar derailleur versus a hundred dollar derailleur and that's just one component on the bike there are many components there, there's bearings in the hubs there's the the bottom bracket there's a, a big bearing in there and, and the quality of that bearing is going to determine how long that bike lasts before you have to tear into the bottom bracket and replace it. Well, you know, that brings up a good point. Before you decide how much you're going to spend on a bike, you need to decide how much you're going to use it. I mean, if you're only going to use it once every week or two, maybe to go across the campground and pick up your mail, then you probably could get away with a cheaper bike. But if you're like us, we're riding three, four or more times. Right now we're getting into biking season. The weather is great. We're getting out there almost every other day. Yeah, and like, like yeah. I said, we, we like to do longer rides. The other day we rode 24 mile round trips. And we can do that in about an hour and a half. So one of the biggest difference between a regular road bike and an e-bike is weight. Weight is a huge factor. These bikes can be really heavy. How I broke my hand was I was on a bike that was nearly 70 pounds and I was test riding it. I didn't own the bike and I weigh about 125, 130. So I'm trying to get going from a stop. I have one leg up and, and the bike is just too heavy for me to keep balanced. For me, I ended up with a higher end carbon fiber bike because not only did I not want to have the bike knock me over, but I also wanted to be able to lift it up. I wanted to be able to get it off and on a bike rack. Yeah, and the example you gave, you said that that bike you were test riding was about almost 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. Your bike is 50. Yeah, yeah, and I can lift my bike. I didn't think I could lift more than 40 pounds, but the way the bike was balanced, plus I can even take the battery out if I need to, but with the battery in at 50, I can lift it. Bike racks. So if you're going to have two e-bikes that you're traveling with, you're going to need a bike rack. It needs to be certified for e-bikes. My bike is a little over 60 pounds, her bike is 50. We're gonna put a link to our bike rack because we went and looked at several and actually we found some great e-bike bike racks, but they were not certified for a fifth yeah, wheel. That's another thing is that they, they have to be certified for e-bikes and they have to be certified for a trailer if that's what you've got them 
hanging right. off the back of it. Right, because imagine you are, you've got a long trailer and you're pulling it and you go over a railroad track or a speed bump. Something happens to the back end and it's a lot of, it's a lot of force that happens to the, to the bike rack and that's why it has to be certified for a fifth wheel for a trailer. Our bike rack locks the bikes in place. If you've watched our channel, you know that we just had a, had her Liz's bike stolen. Mm -hmm. um, it was a horrible day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So e bikes are expensive. You're going to want to protect it more than you would just a regular. I had like a beater bike that I traveled with the first year on the road. So you may all be wondering what this funny shirt is that I'm wearing. Um, this is a cycling jersey. One of the things about cycling, when, especially when you're sharing roads with cars, is you want to be seen. So they're bright colors. Sometimes they have silly patterns on them. Sometimes they have writing on them. The nice thing about a cycling jersey is they all have three pockets on the rear. Some have a half or three quarter zippers like this one does. Some have full zippers like the one I'm wearing. <laughs> we will put a link in the description if you want to check them out. You may already know this, but we have a new channel that we've just launched. It is called Amazing Bike Rides. So if you are stuck inside and you want to take a virtual bike ride or if you've got a treadmill or stationary bike and you want something to look at, check it out. We'll put a link in the description. Since we just had the e-bike stolen, we did do a video with some great tips of things you can do to protect your bike.